Happy Friday, everyone. It is newsletter time. So I hope uh, everybody had a great week. we got great things going on over here, really exciting stuff. So um, the last few collaborations that I've done, uh, I've showed you guys the finished product. Well, what I want to do this time, this is going to be, a, and I'm going to warn you right up front, this is going to be probably a long video. But I want to do this collaboration. I want to do it from the process of start to finish all the way through. Um, so I want to uh, give a shout out to uh, Johnny Brook over at Crafted Woodshop. He's got a really cool logo. So I contacted him and uh, he said he would love to have a sign. And I, actually Johnny said he's seen some of my videos, which is a, uh, an honor because he does some amazing stuff. Amazing woodworker. Um, so anyway, this is what we're going to do. I've got the layout done. Now, we had to do this a little bit different, um, and Vicky did everything, you know, as far as the artwork on this up to now. So what happened was, Johnny sent me his logo through a Dropbox, and with Dropbox, there was no way that we knew how to get that out of there and put it on Rapid Resizer as far as like a, it's not a PDF or a JPEG or something like that. So what Vicky actually did, you took a picture of this with your iPhone, because we can print out from Dropbox. So we printed it out, looked great, took a picture of it with the iPhone, emailed it to yourself, and then we fed it into Rapid Resizer. And this is what we came up with. So now the, the drawback is it has kind of a gray tint to it. So we're hoping that that's not going to be a, a, a real issue. So um, again, this is printed on with a laser uh, printer. And it's printed on just regular paper on laser printer, four sheets, and then we've got them taped together. And we're hoping that this transfer process will work pretty good for us. So, um, oh, here's what I almost forgot. <clears throat> and you guys have, uh, several of you guys have mentioned this, and I've tried it myself, and it works pretty good. Now, I'm using one of the rounds from Lowe's, and... Um, I did have sanding sealer on here, but I took the sanding sealer off. I literally sanded it off because in order for this transfer process to work well, um, you've got to have a smooth board. How's the sound? Does it sound okay? All right, just making sure. You've got to have a smooth board, So I and the sanding sealer causes kind of the grain to stand up. So we've got kind of a smooth board going here. And um, what we're going to do is we're going to put a little bit of the lacquer thinner on down below. Not a whole lot, but just kind of get some lacquer thinner on here on the board first. And that will help, hopefully help, with the transfer process. So now we're going to lay that down. I'm going to take my gloves off again real quick. And I just want to tack this down with tape down at the bottom here and I don't want uh, too much tape on this back side all the tape is on the other side and again we have to print it in reverse I'm just kind of trying to go over all of the details that we had to go through here to get this transfer and let's hope this transfer process works good for us so we're using just regular lacquer thinner or you could use acetone I've used both and they both seem to work about the same. And as you put it on, I'm being kind of careful that I don't put too much on at one time. I'm not sure how that gray is, is actually going to come through being as it, it was actually a picture of the artwork. Now that outside ring, I'm not too worried about that. I can, if I've got any kind of a, a mark on there, I can always draw that in. It's drying so fast. Yeah, it's warm out here in the studio, drying pretty darn fast. I haven't started using my spatula yet. Just 
look at that ring. Eh, that's not too bad on that ring right now. My main thing is really the, the artwork in the center and the lettering. Now the other reason that I'm not really worried about the sanding sealer on here is that I'm going to do this a little bit differently than I would normally when I've got a black layout. I'm actually going to make all of these letters outset, which sounds kind of odd since the letters are black. Normally in that situation, normally I would make all the letters inset and then it makes it nice and easy as a match. But that's not what I'm going to do on this one. I've got kind of a, an idea in my mind of how I want it to come out. And I'm hoping that it comes out the way I want it to. It's really not transferring very well. Yeah, that's what I'm just fixing to do. Many of you are much better at this transfer process than I am, but if I can get a line on there, even if I have to kind of draw it back in, I'm okay with that. Wow. This is really not transferring very well. <laughs> Silence. This is a process, guys. I wonder if it's because it's so hot out here. Could that have anything to do with it? I, you know, I don't know. I really don't. Either way, we got to get it done. smearing underneath mm -hmm. there. All right, well, let's find out what we've got. Actually, I think I can work with that. I'll probably redraw some of this stuff and, and kind of fill in the stuff that I need to, but I, I think that's good enough that I can work with. And I've got my original artwork. So I'm gonna kind of clean this up a little bit, guys and uh, kind of mark out what I need to. But my main thing was this part and, and this part. And I think I've got enough to go by that I can uh, fill in what I need to. So we'll, uh, we'll get this all cleaned up and we'll come back and start some routing. Okay, so we got our layout done. This is our original artwork. I always try and keep the original artwork by me when I'm, uh, when I'm carving in case I have to reference back. So all of my lines came out okay. I kind of darkened some stuff up with a little pen and it worked out pretty good. Um, the most difficult part of this carving, the trickiest part is this, the slab um, hunk of wood. So I'm gonna do that first, then I'm gonna go right into these little letters. One thing that I have touched on before as far as layout with a computer kind of thing, if you notice this artwork, you'll notice, and this is probably something maybe nobody else notices, 
But notice the gap in between the W and the O and how close these are. That's just, and I, I forgot, somebody told me the phrase for that, but it has to do with the typesetting in, a, in the computer program. But anyway, I'm going to try and make up for that a little bit just by hand. Um, but you'll see that when I get to it. So I'm going to carve, um, I'm going to carve this first, then I'm going to jump right down into those, uh, those letters for a workshop. And I've got the SC50 bit in. That's what I'm going to do the real fine detail. Then everything else will probably be done with the profile. So everything's going to be outset here. Everything that all of this stuff is going to be outset. Let's, uh, I've got it set at about, uh, 3 sixteenths, which I think is a little deep. I'm going to back it off to about an eighth. Um, and let's see how that works out. Uh, that's kind of awkward, huh? Let's do it that way. I've got my little dual-headed light. You guys see me. Uh, I showed this the other on a video a week or so ago. So my little octopus-looking uh, dual-headed light. Here, uh, so I'm going to get that set up on my router cord here and I'll have light from two different directions and hopefully we'll light it up well enough for you guys to see boy that still looks deep to me I'm gonna back that off a little bit more I don't want that tip snapping off on me so it may take me a minute or two to get my lights set here All right, here we go.
Ooh, I got really tight in there in some of those areas. Really kind of tricky. You kind of have to watch what you're doing and really pay attention. I think that's going to look okay though. So let's jump down here to these little, I think these are about one inch letters, maybe a little bit less. Little workshop letters. Let's see what happens here. I might be a little deep. guys I think that kind of gives you an idea of where I'm going there you can see how I kind of I widened out this little piece of the W there I might go back and straighten that out a little bit but I think I'm going to do the rest of this off camera then I'm going to change bits go to the profile bit I'll come back and uh, start on this part and the axe handle okie doke so I've got all of the carving that I need to do with the SC50 and I've changed over to the to the profile bit so I got all of this inside this little log I got all that done with the SC50 and I got my words all done or the workshop everything else is going to be done with the uh, the profile bit as far as the the lettering and image and stuff so the way I normally do stuff is the most difficult to the least difficult so the next most difficult thing is this ring around the outside this is all going to be outset so that's what we're going to do now. I've got the bit set at uh, a little over an eighth of an inch, it looks like. I'm going to see if that setting is, it, depth is right. And we'll see if we can uh, work on this ring here. My little octopus light thing is kind of messing with me a little bit. All right, so let's see what we can do here.
Okay, so in case you guys don't know, and you probably couldn't see from that camera angle, for you guys that are brand new, what I'm doing is as I've got the router in my hand here, my, my hand, my left hand, is riding the edge of this board as I'm pulling that around. And then this hand is pulling the base and the router at the same time, or at the, uh, the wood itself at the same time. So I wanted you guys to kind of see that for those of you that haven't seen me do that before. So I'm just kind of roughing this out. I'll go back and kind of smooth all that up. I'm going to make one more cut here, just the same as what I did. And then we'll do the rest of it off camera. But this is, uh, we'll go ahead and do this now. Okay, you guys got an idea of what I'm doing there. So like I say, I'm going to rough it out all the way around. Then I'll go back. We'll come back on and I'll kind of trim it up and try and get it all uh, smoothed out. It's a little rough. This board is really um, difficult to hold a line. You can see it jumping. And that profile bit is sharp too. So uh, I'll finish off the roughing out um, on this ring and then we'll come back and, uh, and trim it up on camera. Okay guys, so I've, I've done the ring all the way around at a, at a shallow depth. Now I'm going back and I'm going at a, at a deeper depth, probably oh, about 3 16 something like that. And uh, this is where I've kind of started that. And now I'm going to just take, some set, take it one section at a time and go around. And like I've said many times, even when I was teaching Eric um, last Friday, about going at different depths this board is really really difficult um, it's fighting me every step of the way so when that happens then going different uh, take it in in different depths and different passes is probably a good idea and that's what I'm doing so I'm gonna come around the corner here and uh, do the inside and outside and uh, see if I can just kind of um, straighten up that circle that ring there.
get the idea I'm gonna go ahead and finish this up all the way around fortunately this is all gonna be cut away and I'm gonna put a fat line Why around did it out cut away? I'm sorry I was not quite uh, this part here every this is all gonna be outset this is all gonna be cut away and this is not all gonna be cut away but there is gonna be I'm gonna go around with my 90 degree and cut a fat line uh, on the outside of here so I have some room to play with there that's why I'm able to get away with uh, what I'm doing here. So anyway, uh, but you guys can get an idea. I'm just going to finish that ring up all the way around, kind of trim that thing up, and uh, see if I can get it fairly square. Fortunately, everybody knows these are freehand carved signs, and um, I could put a template on there or a, a pattern and cut those rings with a pattern, but I kind of like to challenge myself to see how good I can make it look by doing it just all freehand. Anyway, guys, um, so I'll finish that up, and then we'll come back, and we'll, we'll get back into the, to the meat of the sign. Okay, guys, so I have, um, I've got my, my ring around the outside pretty much done. I've got to go back around uh, on the outside of it with my cleanup bit, my 90-degree V-groove. But what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to go ahead and carve this axe handle and then uh, get into carving these letters. So I've still got the profile bit in, and I think I've got the depth just about set. I may have to adjust it a little bit. Let's find out.
Okay, you guys can kind of see where I'm going here. So I'm going to go ahead and finish up the rest of this. Then I'm going to come back, set my, uh, my profile bit deeper, and go around all of this stuff again to give myself that buffer zone that I talk about so that when I take out all of this extra wood, then I don't have to get as close to these letters and take a chance in nicking them. So we'll be back. Okay, guys, so I just finished all of these letters here. I've got the router set right where it is for a specific reason. Um, just to give you guys an idea of how deep I am, I was uh, I cut all of that, uh, all of these letters here at an eighth of an inch deep. So i my thinking is that the stuff in here and my little letters, the you're, fine detail. You're pointing, and I'm not getting on video. My fine detail uh, on the log and uh, the little workshop letters. I was probably about a sixteenth. Uh, I thought I was a little bit deeper actually on these letters, but now I'm going to go to about a quarter of an inch and I'm gonna make a wide groove uh, buffer zone around everything else. This is just our little uh, router bit depth gauge. Makes it kind of handy sometimes. All right, so, um, turn my lights on here, and I'm gonna set it about twice as deep. And that's probably about a quarter of an inch. Let me see here, yep. Right at a quarter of an inch deep now. All right, let's let's make some sawdust. guys a sense of what I'm doing here. Use my brush and get in there. And now I'm going to go ahead and uh, that's the reason I jumped from here down to here because I wanted to see, I wanted you guys to see how I do it on fine detail. So now I just got to finish up those letters there and uh, I'll ch uh, change bits, go with a, uh, the background bit and uh, we'll get some of this Get all this stuff taken out, out of here, so we'll be back. 
Okay, folks, so I've gone around everything with my profile bit at about a quarter of an inch, the outside, the inside, all around the letters. But now what I'm going to do is something different that I haven't done before. I want to take all of this background out and I want everything to be from a circular, uh, in a circular pattern. You guys have seen me do a lot of different patterns. So the way I'm going to do this, I would thinking about driving a, a nail into the center of the board and then working my way out, but I need some reference lines. So I'm going to do it from the outside in, and this is the trick that we kind of come up with. So Vicky is going to spin. This is sitting on the Lazy Susan. Vicky is going to spin, and I'm going to try and draw some reference lines. Go ahead, babe. That's okay. I knew I was going to make lines across those letters at a lot of different places. Keep going. There you go. Yeah, that's not quite. Kind of missed that one a little bit. Take it back here. I just need them like every inch or so. Go ahead. Just something that when I'm doing that background, that I've got some reference lines to go by. That one matched up pretty good. Because I had you move. Because I am the woman. You know what you're doing. You're the hands. <laughs> Here? Yeah, I'm just I'm kind of looking at it at the angle where it's yeah and I'm trying sitting to... down so okay so let's uh, where do you want me to right start here. out there mm -hmm. okay Pretty good. Yep. All right, maybe one or two more. Right about there. Cool. Good enough. Probably about there. We're kind of learning. Yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah. Kind of. And maybe one more. Let's see here. Maybe move it to about there. Yeah. Good enough. You don't want to do one more in that little middle. Yeah, middle. all right. <laughs> Yeah, well, 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 okay. Go. That's about all really need to do. This is a team effort here. Good enough. I can make it work from there. From there, I can. Oops. Unattached. Yeah. Let me have that pen back. Please. Please. So I can kind of, you know, kind of go from there. I know this is right about here is my center of the board. So I can kind of, uh, something like that. I'll make it work. All right. So we'll be back and we'll, um, we'll start this background process. Okay. So I've got my reference lines pretty much drawn in there and I'm just going to work from the center out because I think that'll be the most difficult part is, uh, try to get these uh, circles going without wiping out the letters. <laughs> let's hope I don't do that. So um, let's uh, get to it. I've got the, the bit is the, uh, the 90 degree V groove bit that I use all the time. And I've got it set just slightly less than a quarter of an inch deep. So let's get after it. This is going to make a bunch of sawdust.
up at 7 or 8. But I think, uh, what do you think, babe? I think you guys are getting an idea of what I'm doing here. Obviously, I'm going to go back and take that out and just work from the inside out. And, it, it you know, it's not exact, obviously, but um, it gives the appearance of working, of having that circular motion either from the outside in or from the inside out. And that's what I was really going for. I think it's... Uh, I think it's going to look pretty cool when it's done. Um, actually, I think I'm going to go ahead and take this out, take this, take this piece out, and then uh, we'll probably uh, shut the camera off so this thing doesn't turn into a three-hour marathon. Uh, so hang on just a second with me here. Just keep doing what I'm doing here off camera. You guys, again, I think you've got a pretty good understanding of what I'm doing here and how these reference lines really make a difference for me to keep that, that same motion going. So, like uh, crop circles. Yeah, like a crop circle. That's what I was going for. All right, I will get this done, and then once this is all done, we'll come back on and go to the next step. Okie doke. So, all the carving is done. I've cleaned out everything, just brushed it real good, uh, took out the high spots. But what I'm going to do on this is a little bit different than what I've done before, um, beyond what I've already done here. What I have to do is I have to mask off because these little lines in this little slab here are going to be black. But I don't want any black out here. This is all going to stay natural, much like the, the collaboration I did um, with uh, <coughs> wood, uh, Garage Woodworking. So what I've got to do is I'm going to mask all of this off so that the only thing that ends up being black are down inside these little grooves. So I'm going to go ahead and mask this off, off camera, then I'll come right back and we'll spray that and then uh, go on to the next step. Okay, so these lines I want to be black, so I've got this masked off because I want all of this to be natural. So I'm just going to spray that real quick. Again, remember anytime you're spraying this black, whether it's the ink that I'm using now or the, that black Rust-Oleum, this is the Marsh ink that I'm using, have a real light touch. That's all I need to do. Even though you can see maybe a little bit of wood color through there, it won't make any difference at all. The worst thing you can do with this pine is to overspray. So now we're going to spray the edge. And we'll just do the rest of it off camera. We'll be back. Okay, on that last scene, I don't know if you were paying attention, because I certainly was, I made a huge, huge, catastrophic blunder. I was spraying the edge of this, and you could see, if you go back and watch it, you could see that the overspray was getting in that area that I want to be natural. So I've just spent the last two hours uh, fixing my mistake and recutting that and trying, get it, trying to get out all of the... Um, that spray can is not working trying to get out all of the the black out of the background so um <laughs> don't do what i did so now i've got it completely masked off masked off and covered for when i'm spraying this black edge but you'll you'll notice if you go back and watch it you'll notice that the the background was getting a kind of a a shadow in there anyway we'll come back when this dries and uh we'll uh Go on to the next step. All right, so we are ready to sand. Uh, the edge is all black. Um, these letters, by the way, these letters in this ring um, are going to be black along with the axe handle. They're going to be black, but uh, we'll get into that after we get all the sanding done. So here we go.
So that was my rough sand. Now I'm going to go back with my, my finished sand. And I don't need to be sanding this this much, really, because uh, I'm going to be coloring most of this stuff black. But I want a nice, smooth sand. come back and finish this thing up. I just wanted to kind of get a close up of it. Alright. Okay, we'll be right back. Okay, we are back. So all of the sanding is done. Now, because of the way the logo is, this is what uh, another thing that I'm doing different on this. I decided to use the little uh, sharpies or the little uh, felt pens for coloring the letters and uh, and the axe handle and stuff here. And uh, so that's what I'm going to do right now. Now the reason I decided to do that rather than using the paint like normal is that I'm going to stain this outside ring. I'm going to stain that and uh, so I want the black to be kind of a kind of a match that show the um, the grain through the um, through the actual black. So let's see how this works out. So I, I kind of, uh, again, it's different than what I've done before from the standpoint that normally when I'm painting outset letters, I'm using paint and not a Sharpie. But you can see how the grain kind of shows through a little bit on that. watching you and not the camera. Maybe I moved. I probably did. Out of the frame of the camera. So now you can guys can kind of see what I'm what I'm doing here. So I'm going to go ahead and finish this whole thing, finish all these letters, that axe and that axe handle. I'm going to finish that off uh, off camera and we'll come back and uh, it'll be, uh, it'll, that'll be all done. You'll see what it looks like. Okay, so we have all the black done. Uh, everything is pretty much done except this outside part. I want to put a stain on this outside part. So what I'm using is uh, red mahogany. It's the Minwax red mahogany stain and I'm going to be try to be very careful I'm not uh, maybe dab it on your paper before. I'm not 
I haven't done a whole lot of this. I think that just gives it kind of a nice contrast on that edge. gives you kind of an idea of what I'm doing so I'll just go ahead and finish this up and then come back and we'll be uh, ready to put a finish on this thing are we on yeah okay all right here it is guys so I am gonna just use the Krylon crystal clear because this is I'm sure is just gonna be an indoor sign so I'm gonna go all the way around the edge and then I'm gonna spray, spray the surface of that thing. I'm gonna end up putting a bunch of coats on this. I'm actually gonna walk over to the other side Ooh. now. Yeah, it's, I don't like really spraying this stuff indoors. I'd rather do it outside, which the rest of the coats I will. But, but there it is. Possibly hold it up. Yeah. Well, I'm getting black on my fingers, but that's all right. Oop. Can it show let up all right? A, yeah, no, let me do it. So I'm going to end up putting probably, I don't know, six, seven, eight, nine coats. I don't know how many coats. I'll put a bunch of coats on this, but I got to get it shipped off. So uh, once I get all of the the finish on it completely I'll uh, take another little video and then put on the end of a future video so you guys will eventually get to see this with uh, with the whole finish on it uh, but that's it um, I hope Johnny really likes it he's got a great channel so go check him out and um, I will what I'm on you yeah and I will uh, uh, get this shipped off to him hopefully in the next couple days and I'll set that back up so it doesn't fall down. So thanks for tuning in, guys. I know this is a super long video. I apologize for all the length. Um, <laughs> it was had some challenges for sure. This uh, These rounds are, are really tricky to use sometimes. But anyway, I'm happy with the way it came out. I hope Johnny likes it. So thanks again, guys. Have a great weekend, and we will see you guys on Monday. Bye-bye.